Hi, my name is Leah Day and welcome to this video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. In the last two videos, we learned two different designs, independent designs that work very similarly. Zigzag Spiral and Wiggle Wiggle Spiral. And basically, uh, I made a mistake in my quilt. I accidentally stitched one uh, design, Zigzag Spiral, in a space I should have stitched Wiggle Wiggle Spiral. Now that's not a very big deal because these designs look so similarly. When you put the, this quilt on the wall, these two designs are going to read pretty similarly because really they contain very similar elements. But this is one of those things that I can get a little nitpicky with. I feel like if I intended to put a design in a specific place, that's the design that's meant to go there and not some other design. So I actually do need to rip this out. And I'm going to show you exactly how I rip this out. And it's very tiny, very dense stitching. And so the ripping, you really have to be careful and patient. And this is one of those situations, very true, um, that five minutes of stitching can result in an hour worth of ripping. And that's the frustrating thing about it. Um, I would say more than anything else, uh, whenever you're going to go in to rip a particular space, look at how much time it's going to take. Look how, how big that space is and figure out some other way of dealing with it. In this particular situation, I can't really cover this up and it is bothering me enough that I'm going to end up ripping it out. So let me show you how this works. So here's the space in question. You can see it's not super noticeable that I put the wrong design here, but it's noticeable enough to me and that's what counts. Um, really it's your attitude about the quilt more than anything else that matters. Uh, so I know that I'm going to be bothered by this. So basically I have my top thread and my bobbin thread and I figure out which is which just by tugging on them. If I pull on the top thread, the bottom thread is going to kind of pull forward in a little loop. So I know this one's the bobbin thread. So I'm going to take my seam ripper and bring it very close and just cut off the end of it as close as I can and then give it a tug. I'm just gently pulling on that and I'll create more loops. And I get it to about right there, pull on it again, and rip it again. This is a method that I use whenever I'm pulling out something where I've got stitching here that I stitched before and that's fine, I don't want to rip that and I've got stitching uh, this over here that I need to pull out and I don't know which is which. They're all the same color thread. One was done at one time and the other was done at another time so I've got to be careful here. I can't just take my seam ripper and start slicing stitches up. I've actually got to pick these out and the good thing is you just take and pull up that bobbin thread and just rip it off and then you can tug on the top thread and you can usually get several stitches picked out at once. And so obviously I did some outlining here. That's what I'm pulling out right now. And then I went in and did the design itself. And it's one of those situations where you, sometimes you forget exactly how much stitching you put into a particular space until you actually start to rip it out. And then it's like, oh, I forgot. I actually outlined that two or three times and then I did the filler stitching. So. It's kind of one of those things where thinking it out and making sure that you're stitching the right thing in the right place is really important and it will save you a lot of time. And you can see now I've, got, I've gotten in here and I see that all of this is stitching I want ripped. So I'm going to take my seam ripper and rip that little bobbin thread. And I'm also going to take and insert the seam ripper between, you know, into a stitch and rip that top thread and wherever I am sh absolutely sure I want that ripped, I'm going to do that about every three to four stitches. And I just insert that very tiny tip and then pull it straight through to rip those stitches completely. You want to make sure the stitch is completely ripped. Back here I know I want this ripped out. Just like that. It's okay if you insert your seam ripper and it just pulls the top thread through. That's okay. Just want to try and rip as often as you can. And you've got some tiny stitches. Just have to pull on them. All right. And so once you get that ripped, you can just kind of tug on your top thread. And really, this is best shown from the back. I'm going to flip this over and find that exact same spot on the back. And basically, just use my needle, tug on that bobbin thread and all those little loose threads will come out. And just keep tugging, tugging, tugging 
and you'll be lucky you can get all of it pulled out in one big go just like that. And so at this point I want to rip this bobbin thread real close and flip to the front again and sometimes it can be a little tricky you can get lost as far as which where you're at so just kind of rub your finger over it and then you can find it again and you can always go back and over here this is where the thread started so if the one end doesn't work you can always go back to where the thread started rip the bobbin thread there and start pulling from that side the start is a little less easy because of course that is the start of your thread and sometimes you built up stitches on top of it and that's a little bit trickier to rip from. You kind of want to rip in the direction you were stitching, uh, kind of in reverse. So that was where I ended, this is where I started. So you want to rip in reverse simply because that's the way your stitches will come out easier. They're not stacked on top of one another. Through this space I can go on ahead and insert my seam ripper and pick out some of these, rip, rip through some of these completely. And this is actually a fairly easy design to rip out. This is not taking too long. If I had five inches of it, I certainly would have a lot of time to rip this out. But this is a very tiny little spot, so it's not going to be very time consuming. Once I get all that, and what I'm doing, I'm just ripping about every three stitches and ripping right through that top thread. Okay. No. Cut that top thread real close. And it's good to kind of keep everything clean as you work so it's not too messy. Now flip over to the back. And again, you might be a little lost as far as where you're at. So just kind of rub on it a little bit. And you can usually insert your needle where you know you've ripped stitches and just pull. Just like that. And they'll all come out. You'll get some fuzzies, just keep cleaning it up. My stitching started way over here. And at this point, I can break that and just give that a real nice tug, and all that should come out. Okay, one more time to the front. It should be nearly finished. This is really a lint roller, really comes in handy. Make sure you get it all up. Give, continue to give your top thread a tug. And I think I just did a little bit more stitching around the outline. And I could leave this in, I could probably hide these threads, but when I kind of get in a mode with this, I just want to get all of it out. So I just go on ahead and, and rip. I'm going to go on ahead and rip everything with that stitching that was incorrect. I don't have to necessarily, but mostly I just don't know, like if that's the start, I'll have to rip back anyway in order to have long enough tails to hide it. It's just going to save me time to just go on ahead and rip it completely out and then start again. And when it gets fuzzy like that, just Cut it off as cleanly as you can, and remember you can always clean up with a lint roller. The little fuzzies in the lint, it's not, not that big of a deal, but it is frustrating. I'm just tugging on the top. Oh. And there we go. Tugging on the top thread, bringing up the bobbin thread, cutting it off short, giving it another tug, and that ripped all that out. So all I have to do at this point is just clean it up with my lint roller a little bit, and then start stitching again through this area, and this time make sure that I actually fill it with the correct design, not zigzag spiral, but this wiggle, wiggle spiral instead. So that's it for this video. I really hope that this has made sense and helped you see that ripping uh, is complicated and time consuming. It's not a lot of fun. If you have a small area, of course, it makes sense to go on ahead and rip out stitches that are going to bother you. If you have a big area, understand how time consuming it's going to be and try and find another solution. Maybe cover up the space with paint 
uh, or more thread applique, something along those lines where you don't have to spend all your time with a seam ripper in your hand, not stitching and not quilting. So my name is Leah Day. This has been a video for the Free Motion Quilting Project. Find many more videos stitching out beautiful designs and hopefully not making any more mistakes on Express Your Love, the quilt we're working on through 2013. Find all of that and more at freemotionproject.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.